Gunther Schuller, is there a relationship between graphic arts and music? Well, there has been for some time, and there is now. As a matter of fact, there are some new developments occurring right now. But speaking of the past, first, uh, that we, the tone poems of Richard Strauss and Franz Liszt, of course, are famous examples of a musician translating paintings, or another picture, the Isle of the Dead of Rachmaninoff, for instance, translating paintings into music. At the same time, many of the painters around the turn of the century began to use musical ideas, variation techniques, fugal ideas, polyrhythmic ideas, and using them through color and line in ways very similar to the way a composer would use uh, those ideas. And of course, the artist whom I used, or on, whom, on whose paintings I based this composition that is being performed by the Minneapolis Symphony, uh, was probably the one who brought this trend to its highest peak, and that was Paul Clay. Um, at the present time, I don't know whether anyone has done exactly what I did in this piece, which was reconverting those musical ideas which Clay used in his paintings, reconverting them back into music. I don't think anyone has done that, and in that respect, this piece differs uh, drastically from a piece like Mussorgsky's Pictures and an Exhibition which just takes the moods and the titles as a point of departure, whereas I took the structural compositional elements as a point of departure. And then there's one other relationship which has just come up between music and the graphic arts, and that is there are, there's an avant-garde group of composers in Europe that does not write in normal notation anymore. This has just come up in the last year or two. They draw abstract paintings or lines onto musical notation paper and let the performer improvise according to those shapes. This is of course a highly subjective thing and almost anything can happen at these performances. And also they are working out a kind of graphic notation which is completely removed from our normal conventional musical notation. In discussing music and art, how can you translate music and graphic art and vice versa? Well, the first thing I'd have to say is that whatever you do will be, to a great extent, subjective, of course. And what I, as a composer, might do in translating some artwork into music might not be completely valid for everybody who hears that music or who sees that work of art. The relationship will be somewhat uh, a subjective matter. However, I think there are certain objective things which one can say and which I tried to do in this particular piece. For instance, one of the compositions, one of the paintings of clay that I used is a painting called Pastoral, which is a work in which clay used metri uh, geometric designs. And as you, and they, they occur on about five or six levels, looking at the picture from top to bottom. And each level, on each level, the particular geometric design that he's working with undergoes a degree of variation. As you read the picture from left to right, it really is a painting that takes time to, uh, to realize, um, to, to perceive, because you cannot look at it at a glance. You actually have to read it like a book from left to right and, you know, and down the various levels. Now, I did something very similar to this in my musical composition, taking certain rhythmic ideas which correspond, subjectively to me anyway, to those geometric designs, and continuing them simultaneously on five or six levels, as the painting does, and varying them gradually, as also the painting does, and at the same time trying to get the pastoral mood which Clay got through the use of greens and a blue sky, and which I got through the pastoral instruments in the uh, orchestra, which are primarily the clarinet and the French horn. There are other paintings and other pieces in this composition of mine in which I used similar but slightly different techniques. And I don't think there's any necessity to go through all of those, but I, I think there are new possibilities here which have not yet been exploited by composers, and I can only say for myself that I found it extremely challenging. Who are some of the artists today, or perhaps uh, in the past, uh, that is within a uh, period, say, of the 1900s to the present day, 
who lend themselves to translation in terms of either symphonic music or, say, jazz. Uh, mentioning, say, Picasso of the 20s or some other early cubist or perhaps someone who does rate with some people or does not rate with some people, like Stuart Davis, mm -hmm. up to Jackson Pollock? Well, it depends what you're, what you're after. You, as I have said, that I try to relate my music to the structural, compositional elements in the painting. Now, other composers might want to just take the mood of a picture, let's say, of Stuart Davis, the egg beater or something, as a, as a point of departure, and write a kind of satiric piece on that. If you, if you take the former point of view, that is the structural, compositional relationship, then I think you are pretty much limited because there are not too many painters who give you that kind of a basis to start with. And I do think that Clay is the foremost one. I think Feininger would be another. And certain other, well, modern painters, I'm thinking of Hartung, a German, and perhaps even Jackson Pollock, although in a very special way. Um, Mondrian, too, would be another one. But as for the other area, I suppose you could take almost any painter, you know, and get inspired by a painting. I remember I did a, something like this about one of my first orchestral compositions. I simply got very excited about a piece, a painting by the uh, Chilean painter Mata. I saw it at the Museum of Modern Art, so I went home and wrote, wrote this big tone poem on it. I mean, that kind of a very loose relationship, uh, of course, a com any composer could do any time, but I think in that case, you would have to write very extensive program notes and explain to the audience beforehand what your music is supposed to be describing. Whereas in the kind of approach that I used, that almost is not necessary, because if you have any eye for the painting and any ear for the music, if you have both simultaneously, you can actually see an objective relationship. Whereas with the other, the thing that you were mentioning, uh, I think you would have to tell the audience beforehand that that's what you did. And uh, that makes the relationship uh, between the music and painting, I suppose, a little more subjective and not quite as, uh, doesn't hold true as much and perhaps not as valid. With regard to jazz, Gunther Schuller, uh, suppose we were going to just uh, transpose here. Jazz music is being played in almost every area of the world today. Uh, is there valid jazz music that be, can be translated in terms of art? For example, the graphic arts medium, using either uh, the oil on canvas or something even as rude as a ballpoint pen on legal note paper, or uh, to the mixed media of watercolors and uh, oils, even linoleum block. Well, I, I'm sure that it can be done, and I, I'm even sure that it is being done. The question arises how valid this art is and how far it can lead. I. I'm not sure that you could do anything more than a, just a kind of general impressionism of a certain jazz performance that you heard. And of course, if the artist is a great artist, that can, that can make that particular painting a great work of art. But I think the, the, I, the idea in itself, the idea of listening to a jazz performance and then doing a painting based on that does not in itself guarantee anything. But I think it's an interesting idea, and I suppose it's somewhat related also to the jazz and poetry thing that's going on right now. Do you feel that, uh, for example, uh, jazz and poetry is a valid idea, or is that just descriptive music with words, such as the kind of music that you would find in the realm of film? It has been, mostly. I'm not saying it has to be. I think there again, it depends upon the quality of the people involved. I think most of what I've heard has been sometimes very poor poetry and also sometimes very uh, unimportant jazz. The thing together creates a sort of atmosphere which is interesting, but nothing really lasting. I mean, nothing of the masterpiece quality. There's one interesting thing, one relationship, though, between jazz and contemporary painting, especially between jazz and a painter like Jackson Pollock, that his art is to a some extent more improvised than a lot of painters who pl plan a painting tremendously carefully and, and who are great draftsmen. Uh, Pollock, as far as I can tell, and I certainly 
don't speak as an authority. I'm a layman on this subject. But the the later paintings seem to be uh, improvised in the sense that the actual exact placement of a of paint on the canvas is not as important as the overall design within which there's a great deal of leeway as he, well, th throws the paint on or what he whatever his particular techniques were. And in that sense, that's very similar to jazz improvisation. And I think there's a whole new field which Jackson Pollock opened, which I think uh, is valid and and fascinating. There's something that you said that um, either bothers me or that I want clarified, and that is the uh, fact that someone who may sit down and use the graphic arts medium to impress an idea of what the music might convey. And um, I wanted to ask you whether you felt this was valid or uh, should I put it this way, is it as valid as you perhaps interpreting a painting? I, I don't quite follow your question yet. Well, let me see if I can uh, put it a little more succinctly. I, I wondered whether you had the feeling that a graphic arts impression of either jazz or symphonic music uh, was valid, as opposed to, say, uh, a musical translation of the visual art. Oh, well, uh, that depends upon what kind of translating you're doing. That's why I made the specific difference, difference between two kinds of translating of painting into music. I mentioned the one that relates to a structural element and one that is simply an impression kind of thing. Now, if you compare a composer just getting an impression from a painting to a painter getting an impression from a jazz performance, I think those are on an equal basis, and I'm not so sure that either of those is valid. But I'm a lot more sure, I think, about the approach that I used, which relates to certain specific things which both of these arts now have in common, and therefore make that relationship logical and justifiable. But the, the, the purely impressionistic kind of approach uh, does in itself not have any particular validity, and the only thing I can say about that is that it depends upon the particular artist. I mean, certain artists can take even less valid ideas and make great art of them, out of them, and that could apply to the musician or to the painter.